Caterpillar 7495HF is a very large electric rope shovel. It weighs over 1400 tons and a full bucket load is 100 tons. This model by TWH is of the HF version and one of its features is the very large crawler tracks, which are designed for use in softer oil sands materials. The model is very big and heavy so it comes in some jumbo sized packaging. And first up that consists of a large black outer carton and inside that are spacers protecting another box. Lifting the inner box out is really a two person job unless you're the Incredible Hulk of course. And even when that box is put down we're some way from getting the model out. The outer sleeve pulls off easily and the red warning sticker tells you to undo the ties underneath. And this is definitely not in the category of frustration free packaging. But it's a big heavy model so it's right that it doesn't bounce around when it's shipped worldwide. There are a couple of straps to cut and the two giant trays are factory sealed with tape which has to be cut before you can lift the lid. And with that done you get the first sight of the model inside. There are lots of separate pieces of packaging which keep the model in place so the best thing to do is to mark those up before removing them. So it's easier to know where they go if you ever want to repack the model and ship it somewhere. We're getting near the end now so we can take away the remaining pieces. And that then leaves the task of trying to get the model out of the bottom tray. It's very heavy and awkward to lift so if you're a little bit weak you might want to have a doctor on standby. There was a problem with the review model because one of the dipper ropes was tangled inside the house and that took some effort to sort out. The remaining parts of the packaging surround the crawler tracks and they're fully shrink wrapped so you need to get a sharp knife and carefully cut that free and then you can pull it all off. There's very little assembly to do, it's just limited to some railings which would probably be vulnerable to being damaged during shipping. One piece goes on the side of the model near the access ladder and there are three sets of railings which go along the top of the model at the back. The fit of these parts is pretty good and they can just be eased into place. But if they're a bit loose you could glue them I suppose or if you don't like doing that on models then you could just use some plastic putty. Starting at the bottom the crawler track pads are metal and massive and they're individually pinned together. The track frames are also massive with some heavy detailing within the castings. Between the tracks there's a red stinger which keeps the electric cable clear from the tracks and there are huge motors that drive the crawlers. One of the great aspects of this model is the detailing even in hard to see places and that includes cables and warning signs. There are metal ladders, access platforms and handrails all around the model and they're of a high standard. There are also some excellent small graphics which are perfectly sharp and legible. The large cab has got painted door hinges and a beacon light outside. And at the back the air conditioning plant is highly detailed with more tiny notices. And the detailing is very good inside too with graphics on the computer screen. A particularly nice aspect of the model is the very good paintwork and the very sharp cat graphics. There are numerous floodlights around the machine and they've got realistic looking bulbs. Up on the roof the A-frame has some excellent ladders with safety cages. And there's plenty of other detailing in terms of hatches and a generator. The three giant air filters are also particularly impressive. At the front the boom is a very heavy box type metal construction. There are access ladders all the way to the top where the rope wheels look good. And all of the ropes and strops are steel coloured. The dipper handle is a large silver tube with some intricate detailing at the end. And the connections to the dipper are suitably heavy with painted rivets. The dipper itself has got excellent structure and good looking teeth. The places some people will go to hide away from the boss. Well this is a big heavy model and the tracks are big too but the good news is that they do roll. And the mechanism is pretty clean despite the size and weight. There's too much friction for them to roll on a smooth surface but you can always roll them by hand. But they will roll on a rougher surface like carpet. The rotation of the whole machine is also good, it's smooth. And again that's quite a modelling achievement given the weight involved. The only thing to make sure of is that you turn it using a solid part of the model rather than the handrails. The movement of the dipper or bucket is controlled by a large key which pushes into the side of the body. And when it's engaged you need to push hard to free up the internal brake and then you can gently turn it to raise or lower the dipper. The only thing you need to make sure of is that you keep a tight hold of the key because that dipper is really pretty heavy. To move the dipper handle in and out you push the key through an open window in a door which is a neat modelling solution. 
and by turning the key it works the rope crowd mechanism in and out. So by combining these two actions you can get the dipper pretty much anywhere you want it and the range of possible movement is good enough to satisfy most poses that you might want to do. Another feature which requires the key is the opening of the door on the dipper so it can discharge its load. However on the review model the dipper door hinges were a little bit stiff so it did quite literally need a hand to open and it was not free swinging. Although if the dipper is loaded with some rocks that provides enough weight for the door to open when you pull the latch. One of the smaller features is the electrical stinger for the power cable and that just swings in and out. To obtain access to the machine an operator would normally pull on the chain which is hanging down modelled here by Fred and then the stairs would lower. And there's another access arrangement on the opposite side of the machine where a vertical ladder goes up and down and you need to be sure that the ladders are up before you turn the machine otherwise they will get bent on the tracks. The large operator's cab has a couple of doors and these both open. The one on the outside swings fully open 180 degrees but the one on the inside can't quite open as far because it clashes with the handrails. But even so the door hinges on both doors are quite robust so it's been implemented well by TWH. There's another small feature which is really quite nice and that's all of the floodlights are adjustable for position. So it's a neat little touch. One of the good things to do with a big model like this is to pose it with other similar models and it poses very well with a big cat mining truck. But wait a minute, what's the idiot Cranes Etc team doing now? You can't load a road truck with a big mining shovel. Hey, that's not too bad. Maybe they're onto something here. This is a very impressive model of a large electric rope shovel. It has very little modified from the original Bucyrus branded machine, but the details and quality are of a very high standard. And there's no doubt it looks great in Caterpillar colours. It's an outstanding mining machine model.